And it's live, allegedly, according to the little thing that's not spinning anymore. So I see a good evening. Those are people on the uh, European side of the world, I'll assume. It would be good evening there. It's good afternoon for those of you in the Eastern Standard Time. And uh, good morning for my friends from the land down under in the Australian area of the world. So always good to be here. I do have kind of a hard stop, so I can't go too long um, at about 4.30-ish because I have an event I'm going to. Those of you that are local to Detroit, um, I mean, I've met some of you that were been on my live stream and follow my channel, uh, the IT and the D events. So give a shout out to them. My friend runs that. So uh, if you're in Detroit and you're bored and would like to hang out and have a beer with some IT people, uh, that's at five o'clock today, five o'clock Eastern Standard Time at Nancy Whiskey. So uh, I don't know how many of you are local, <laughs> but nonetheless, that's um, that's where I'm going to be. And uh, it's a night. I think it's hot out. I haven't really been outside today. Well, I was outside for a minute. So. OK. I, one of my employees just messaged me, so I had to reply to that. I always try to stay responsive to all of them. That's uh, the important part is making sure, you know, you got to be responsive to the customers. But it's uh, it's an odd thing to me because I've run into this with several people who work in IT when they have a owner or someone who's in charge and responsible for things, especially when they hold a lot of keys to the kingdom and lock things down to where they're not responsive to their employees. It's always a head scratcher for me because uh, it often brings them to a stop of getting things done or moving a project forward. Um, yeah. So nonetheless, uh, we are going to talk a little bit about PF Sense, Tailscale, Unify, and some errata. So, nonetheless, <laughs> um, hello, Tom and Chat. We got a greetings from Ireland. Hey, Travis. Uh, he's he'll be stopping in because he wants to pick something up. It's on the shelf for you. So that's there. Can't make it. Uh, you'll be in bed by the time I get there from the UK. Yes, that would be quite the uh, hike from the UK. Denmark. I think I said Ireland already. Netherlands. There's the other one. Greetings from the Netherlands. So I love that people are just from all over the place. It just makes the conversation that much more interesting. Such a diverse group of people here to talk about technology. Um, you know, I we and Jay did the video and I still haven't had a chance. Uh, I kind of lazied on a little bit of it of Headscale because I wasn't sure how Let's Encrypt integrated with Headscale. Um, that's I brought up because of the tail scale thing. Head scale is pretty cool looking, and uh, I have the demo, but I did not set up the Let's Encrypt. And I want to make sure if I do the video on head scale, I cover the entirety of the features. So Jay says, hey, I'll look at it. This is actually behind the scenes of what actually goes on. Jay says, hey, I'll take a look at this. And then uh, Jay got, just like me, sidetracked. And um, he, he got stood up, but he didn't look at the Let's Encrypt thing. So... Um, that's my reason I haven't done the video on it. Cause I was like, Oh, maybe Jay will look at it. Oh, I guess I got to look at it, but you know, it is pretty cool. Nonetheless, something else is kind of cool. I think it's worth noting here and bringing up. I don't see any problem with mentioning this because it's public. If you know where to look, we'll drop a link here in a second. So let's go ahead and bring this over here. Because the head scale team, and I mentioned this before, even with head scale, um, you have the, this is all the doc, this is because it's all open source, it's all development documents, but let's go over here to the bottom, the part that matters. Hey, look, currently making WireGuard easier and more magical at tail scale. So uh, the people from the tail scale team actually want to contribute or offer their uh, expertise to make sure that this package works well in PF sense, which I thought that's kind of a cool thing. Um, and back to the head scale thing. One of the neat things that was mentioned was the fact that they uh, have, this was a Reddit forum post. I didn't dig through the GitHub comments, but apparently they help contribute and help out the code. Um, even though head scale, you know, is basically allows you to use tail scale without using a tail scale web server, but it's still pretty cool. They seem to be committed to the community on everything. So I think that's a really cool feature uh, that they were doing on there. So excited about their participation in all of it. Um, I just like seeing companies that are, you know, doing good for the open source community. So contributing back, 
you know, you have the NetGate team sponsoring this for it's going to PF Sense, and then you have the Tailscale team going, hey, what can we do to help? What can we do to make this transition easier? So that's awesome. Albuquerque. I just like saying that word. That's just a cool word. So <laughs> I honestly don't know where Albuquerque is. I guess I could look it up, but I don't. I'm curious enough to look. It, Albuquerque, New Mexico. So I imagine it's a little warmer there. It's a, it's a good word, though. It's Albuquerque. I don't know. <laughs> oh, the silliness, nonetheless. Yep, New Mexico. All right. Hello from the Netherlands. How is your day going? So far, it's going well. I have um, had a lot of conversations. I have like so many things going. I talked to, and I've done a couple of videos before with David Boomble. Uh, those videos are doing well, where I did some interviews with him. And uh, we're probably, you know, we're just collaborating on a couple more ideas. I'm still testing all the Cisco stuff that he connected me with because I wanted to do a longer term test of stuff switching my Unify out for Cisco to make sure it works well. And that is, you know, I don't want to ever test a product of, hey, look, it works out of the box, guys, because that just, to me, doesn't provide a lot of value to the audience. Now, I'm not going to sell a large-scale Cisco deployment to see if things work, but, you know, it's an uh, important aspect, at least to have done some level of lab testing extensively and things like that. So that's an important uh, that. <laughs> Haven't I seen Breaking Bad? Yes, I've seen Breaking Bad, but I um, I don't know. I'm not good with I'm not good with city names because I haven't been there. I need to travel more. That's not my to-do list. That was actually, uh, unfortunately, a big part of my day was sucked up with trying to do itinerary for all my travels because I'm, um, you know, trying to figure out where I'm going to be, when I'm going to be there. I'm going to be at CompTIA Chicago. Um, I'm still working out a few details, but I'll be there for at least two days in Chicago, then Vegas, then Miami, then Orlando. Uh, all these are different tech events I'm going to be at. And there's also a Linux one somewhere in between. I got to make sure I get the day for uh, that me and Jay will be attending. So, there's a lot going on. And uh, hello from Australia. That's um, a place far, far away from me. That's a that's a really long flight. I, it's not anytime soon, I think, that I'll be uh, going out to Australia. But pretty cool. Have you managed to get auto channel optimization work on Unify? I haven't had a problem turning them on auto. It seems to work. Uh, it hasn't been problematic. A lot of times we just leave things at the default and they seem to work. We don't start monkeying with stuff. And this is kind of my joke about consulting of how much time you spend in consulting, setting things to default because people go around and go, look at all the knobs. Let me change all the defaults. And, uh, then we spend time undoing all the defaults. And <laughs> that's, that's sometimes the reality of it. Uh, that's some of the fun, uh, consulting i'm gonna i want to pull something up because it always throw this out there because this is funny but it's so true on a lot of stuff i put it there hundred dollars if you watch 150 if you help and 200 on it if you worked on it first i kind of you know it's kind of the joke and it's um just so much that people poke 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 at everything and we're like why why did you change all of the default settings what did you do i don't know i just kept clicking and now it doesn't work well that's a problem and that's where the issues come from i was making sure something was turned off over there but yeah so don't uh defaults work pretty good for unify looking at linode recently for installing pf sets interesting do you have to create installer disk first but by booting to recovery environment um, and then adding, you know, I've never tried setting it up in Linode that probably would work. Um, yeah, I, I haven't tested it. It's been like something once in a while that sounds like a fun idea. And then I kind of fall off of that fun idea. So it's a matter of, uh, I don't know. It, I don't have a solid use case for it. Uh, so I haven't tested it. So it's not it's not something I've spent much time on. It should work, I guess. Just got to figure out what their process is. Oh, hot sauce talk. Let's go ahead and get that out of the way because 
that is the um let me pull it up a pain apple i gotta find the link for it throw this up here i should probably mention it at the beginning um we did do some hot sauce this is just um pain apple Hot sauce. It tastes like regret. I'm not going to put it on my recommended list. So, uh, but I'll put it on ones I've tried now. I don't know if it was amazing or not. It was definitely really hot, way hotter than I expected. So, um, that's just Pain Apple by Burns McCoy. Now, in generally speaking, uh, Burns McCoy, they just make a lot of good hot sauces. I will recommend theirs. Uh, this one is really hot, but their other ones, like their Verde sauces, roasted habanero, are really good. Um, the hot sauces are good when they're hot. The mango habanero, I think I like that one too. Um, but yeah, the Burns McCoy in general, I uh, they, they make a good set of sauces. We'll go with that. So there's the hot sauce talk. You have a question. <clears throat> I'm looking at upgrading my current mesh uh, Netgear Orbi for a more advanced network with VLAN. Any good tips for equipment? Sadly, wireless uplink rental in the flat for Unify. You know, a question comes up a lot. I got... DMs, someone DM me again, someone tag me in Twitter. It, this happens almost almost weekly, um, and sometimes a forum post. Hey, Tom, I want a Unify alternative that has better support and no license fees. I don't really have a solution for you at that point, but I will say Unify makes a solid product. I think they're reasonably priced. Uh, it works. You know, in if you can't do, because it's in a place that you can't run wires, they do offer mesh networking. Uh, Matter of fact, I think I have one. I am going to review this, but not at this exact moment. You guys reminded me that this was a box behind me. I have a tube, a tube of Unify. So we're going to review the Unify tube. And uh, I really, this is a solid tube. It's actually really heavy. Um, it's got a good feel to it, but nonetheless, I will be reviewing some more Unify stuff. I kind of got off track and I there's a lot of other people reviewing it, but a lot of people seem to want my opinion on it as well. So I got a bunch of Unify stuff that I bought, you know, completely I bought it. So I'll be doing the review and offering my opinion. But yeah, Unify is not a bad way to go with it. So good stuff. Does a stronger password to your PSN positively affect how secure it is from outside intruders? Um, You shouldn't have your PFSense open to outside people. End of story. I don't care how strong the password is. Don't open it to the outside world is a better experience. So don't open your PFSense. Uh, it, strong passwords are encouraged. They're great. But not opening it to the outside world, you eliminated the place where they're coming in. That's the best, you know, deal. Why not Unify, Wi-Fi only or everything? Um, the Unify, like, for the Wi-Fi is great. I'm not, their firewalls, I've done some reviews and maybe I need to do another one. It doesn't have a lot of in-depth features, but it may have the features you want. So do you need VPN access? That's the biggest question with Unify. Their VPN is mediocre at best. It's not great. So if you are going to want a lot of VPN integration, Unify is probably not for you. Uh, that's one of the reasons I recommend PFSense so much because it's so diverse. It's so feature rich. They added tail scale for people who are behind CGNAT, which is amazing, but it's really comes down to, you know, what feature sets you need. It's nice having everything integrated in one platform. I agree with that completely. I just wish they did a better job on things like VPN and failover and, you know, better VPN features overall, not just checking the box that they have it with P with the P uh, Unify stuff. <clears throat> Do you recommend to try out PFSense instead of Unify UDM? Uh, to increase the learning curve. Oh, you're going to increase the learning curve of it. That's, you know, Unify's goal is to set it and forget it and make it really easy, which is nice. But if you want something more in depth, yeah, PFSense has a steeper learning curve. There is no doubt. So, um, all right, cool. Let's see what these messages were and if they were any ones that are important. It's not employees. <laughs> um, Nonetheless, the uh, learning curve, for sure. You're going to learn a lot more with PFSense. Looking to move uh, from Microtik, does PFSense do VRFs uh, in an understandable way? I don't 
think that's even support. I don't think you can do VRF in PFSense. The, uh, yeah, I don't think that's something. Yeah, there's not any uh, native support that I'm aware of for it. So I just double checked and Googled real quick. So nope. You should be logging directly your PFSense. Uh, you shouldn't be. Yeah, you should not be logging. Or, anyways, correct. Have you ever used DRT? Just found an old router, threw it back. I threw it back on 2008. I probably haven't used DDRT since 2008. I know the project's still going. I just don't use it. Do you have any idea why Unify SS1 keeps dropping SSIDs and restarting them sometimes two times a day? Bad cabling, bad power. Those are the two most common reasons. Check the log files. That's the most helpful. Uh, or set up logging so you can centrally log everything and start going through it. Have you encountered Juniper Mist line of products? If no, what's your thoughts on it? Nope, haven't used. I mean, I'm aware of a lot of the Juniper products, but I haven't really used them. The problem with not just Unify, but many, many companies is a lack of availability. Access P PF Sense from a VPN. Yes. Tail scale is another option because that's uh, one of the things I threw in the title here today. Don't open anything. You don't have to the outside world. Look at the APC hack. A lot of people shut down UPSs over remote management. Oh, yeah, that's a whole other one, too. Yep, yep. Um, there's another I tweeted out today because there's another incident from uh, what's that place called? Um, Atlassian. Hard coded credentials. Who would have thought anyone would ever figure those out? <laughs> Yeah, those are fun times. On a project, we need to use a Netgear M4300 switch instead of Unify. Any suggestion for Wi-Fi APs from them? I've never used Netgear, um, uh, any of the Netgear stuff. I can't. Even, I don't think I've even reviewed it ever. So, not. I don't really have a suggestion on Netgear things. I have three ASUS Wi-Fi. Wired together to increase my Wi-Fi range to house, but it keeps dropping out. Quick turn on off phone fixes it. Anything to check? Uh, not really. Those consumer ones are sometimes not always the best, and I don't test them very often, so I don't know their current status of how good they are. Once I moved over to, you know, years ago, 10 years ago, more, or yeah, like 12 years ago, I started using Unify. I quit using all the consumer stuff and I quit even testing it. Uh, it was just so much better to get into that. Now I've tested other stuff like Aruba and things like that, but the consumer Wi-Fi market just, it's lowest, how cheap can we make it? And it's just not good. That's generally my, my feelings on it. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe some of the products have gotten better, but the overall feeling I have is it's not great. Does the device semi network uh, will count against a tail scale device limit? They do not. And this is one of the things I, I pointed out in the video as well. Uh, you're limited if you, for example, when you're using tail scale, um, it'll pull up their pricing. So the tail scale has a uh, free tier and their free tier, you know, up to 20 devices. PFSense is only one device. A device is any computer phone server with TailScale installed connected to your network. Device limits are pooled across your network. It's a um, device running TailScale. So if you just have PFSense, you've only got one device. PFSense uh, is a build as firewall, so it can come with routing features. Make or take our developed routers who can do some firewalling. Yeah, that's very true. And the in MikroTik is also a little confusing to use uh, sometimes. There's no doubt. Any idea if they're planning on for SD WAN? Glad you ask, because Tailscale is an SD WAN. I, 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 you have to be more specific. SD WAN is a great marketing term um, that encompasses many, many technologies. Uh, what is the specific use case you're having? Because technically, Tailscale is an SD WAN product. So I can now say that they include what falls in the category of SD WAN. I have a whole video if you look at my channel about SD WAN because I talk about what it means across a lot of different um, venues. So already running PSNs and loving it. Now I want to get control of everything else. VLAN, Wi-Fi, separate SSD. Thanks for the amazing videos. Awesome. I'm glad they were helpful. Regarding optimization, the option doesn't work on our controllers. Wondered if you know how to get it start working. It worked a day and stopped support. Haven't been helpful either. I don't know. I haven't seen it stop working when you turn it on. So that I don't have an answer for. Um, 
check the logs, look for errors in them. That's often where we start with everything. For a couple of VLANs, uh, are you suggesting layer two or layer three? You don't need a switch. You need a switch that supports VLANs. You don't need a switch that supports routing uh, most of the time. You know, people ask for it more often than they need it. I have a video explaining how uh, switch routing works as well that dives into those details. No supply chain shortages with the Unify tube? I don't know. I, I My staff ordered it and said, Tom, review this. So that's where the tube came from. I mean, I bought it, but more specifically, my staff bought it. Uh, let's see. Your education opinion is Zixel, which has mentioned uh, <laughs> my Zixel opinion. Let's go ahead and pull up uh, Zixel opinions. Y X E L hard coded passwords. So um, this not not once, but at least a couple times, we they decided to do things like this. Um, I don't know why, but this is you know Zixel. Let me pull it up here, and their hard coded password problem. I don't understand why companies think to do this. Um, that just proves to me they don't care as much about, you know, passwords. Uh, so, yeah, that's just silliness. So, according to Excel, the ZYFP account was designed to deliver automatic firmware updates to access point B FTP. We're guessing the plans for wireless access point in the network to call home regular basis to local router and check for updates. That sounds harmless. Assuming anything download via FTP digital signature, given FTP connections themselves are unencrypted and therefore easily tampered with. But it's just silly. Like they, I don't think they were malicious. They were, it's either you're a malicious or you're inept. Neither one of those answers being yes makes me think I should use your networking gear or products. And this happened a couple times as I sell. So I kind of, like don't like their i didn't like their products to begin with i played with them and didn't care for them and uh yeah them having hard-coded credentials and things like that yeah this is an issue uh let's see do you have a recommendation for uh to have a better view on the unify logs instead of the clip um yeah we use gray log so gray log pipes all the um uh, we pipe all of our logs via syslog to Graylog out of Unify. This gives us visibility into all the little details on there. So Graylog, because it supports, you know, sending things to syslog server, send it to your Graylog server. Um, that's kind of the go-to solution for a lot of that. That way, you know, as the devices, you know, do their thing, you're able to track and log it. And when you have disconnects, when you have errors, you have a nice journal of all the things you can track down within there to determine what went wrong. Centralized logging, man. That's where it's at. Any recommendations on a local print server? Sharing Windows 11 is proving a giant pain. Uh, usually Windows Server. That's what we use for a print server. Hmm. Well, Windows Server is what we use for our clients. We don't have a central print server at my office because we don't really print anything. We have a network-attached brother printer. I think it's a brother. I don't know. Probably it's a brother. Could be... I don't remember. I don't print very often. I have a brother printer network attached it here at my house, mostly for my wife to print. And about once a month, I print things. <laughs> Is there a, a way to put more than one IP in a Unify switch? No, not that I know of. I don't know why you would need to either. I don't understand the need for that. Not sure if that's still a thing in Unify where it disables SID, lost the internet, just something to remember. It does do that. Um, I think it still does that. When it can't ping out, it will disable. I don't remember what models do that. I wanted to dig into that because that was, I thought the feature was supposed to be fixed. And I realized when we were resetting stuff, one of our Unifies uh, went blinky uh, when it didn't have internet. And I'm like, that's interesting. So. Yeah, consumer mesh AP configs are such a nightmare. Yes, absolutely. That's why I don't do them. They're harder. They're literally harder to do it on the consumer devices compared to the commercial ones. Do I think Unify will integrate in a tail scale in the future? No. I don't think they plan on any integrations for it. 
Matter of fact, I got to dive into the way they're doing their VPN because it confuses me. You know, you have your new, what is that product called? The, um, the, the Unify product that's for accessing things. Uh, they're like their secure cloud thing. Like they're pushing it. I looked at it and I said, it, you have to sign up for a cloud to have it talk to your Unify to have it kick out a VPN file. Why don't I get the VPN file right out of Unify? Well, because they designed it in a more complicated way to try to make it easier for doing things. But I don't know. So I don't expect them to go to tail scale. That would make things too easy. Not, a, I mean, hacking support on there versus official support are very different things. Really hate the fact that they assume that you want JPs to go down and you lose internet. Seems like a really dumb idea to me. I'll go with you all in on that one. That's why I want to re revisit that topic and play with it and figure out which my, I have a bunch of them in my office. I want to figure out which ones do it and which ones don't. Hello from the Netherlands and thank you for the donation, Benjamin. Awesome. Thank you for the content. Very much. Thank you for the donation very much. I know I can add multiply P's on my Arista switches, but I don't know why you want them. That's like, because you can, we got to, is one thing, but what's the use case? That's the part I'm missing. I don't understand why I would want that. Was a really good CCTV system to use currently using Blue Iris. It's just a really good Linux based one a while back. I completely forgot the name. I use Synology for everything. Does other Linux open source ones exist? Yes. Um, I can't remember the name of it either. Surveillance. Surveillance is hard to spell. <laughs> but it is right now, at least. Zone Minder was one of them, but there's another one besides Zone Minder that has a weird name. I can't remember the name of it. Um, Zone Minder is one of them out there. None of them are good, though. I wouldn't put them in the category of good. Synology is what I like that's good. So Synology makes a really good one. The other one's where? Yeah. Unify wireless uh, theoreticals are great, but what about the max number of devices you've been able to safely and reliably connect to the Unify AP? Um, I'd have to go digging and look. I don't recommend, I mean, if they say you can put 200 devices on it, cool. I don't know that I would recommend hitting the maximum because can do and works well are going to be two different things. Once you get to that level of device density, if you don't have one of their high density models that claim to support 500, we try not to exceed even the 50% mark of those. Like we spread them out more because um, I just know you're going to get a better experience. It's kind of like saying, could my truck, drag some incredible amount of weight or should my truck drag some incredible amount of weight could it do it yes could it do it well probably not i don't you know i know what my truck is rated for like how big of something i can tow is the maximum rated weight is not what i would recommend <laughs> the connectivity part sd wan uh is not the main selling part the safe story is what vendors are focusing on right now the overlay technology of SD-WAN is commoditized and security is what matters. Yeah, and I haven't really been, uh, I've not seen any SD-WAN vendor that blew me away with their security offering uh, and, and actually wowed me with it. A lot of them are making the claim, I think it's oversold. PFSense or OpenSense, I'm all day on PFSense, but use what makes you happy, as I say. Switches that are VLAN aware. Not enough memes about Zixel. You're right. I should work on that. <laughs> I should work on more memes. Yesterday during the Home Lab show, you and Jace cheer me towards Tailscale. I absolutely love it. As someone who uses mobile data, Wi-Fi is terrible uh, on phone, but now still access my Home Lab. That's good. And it took you less than 24 hours to get it set up. <laughs> uh, do you have a video on how to... Uh, configure unify your unified report gray log. I don't, but I started signing in and then I started answering more questions. Uh, it's actually, I think I got to switch to the other network. Hold on, switch to the right network for this. I think it's under system, it, it's just an entry in the system. Let me just find it and bring it up. There we go. 
We'll share the screen. And there you go. You just put the syslog host in and the syslog port. You're done. That's it. So I don't think it needs a video. Um, it's just a matter of piping it to the port. Now, inside a gray log, I had to set it up to receive the Unify stuff. But it's just a system setting. And uh, you just set the syslog host. That's it. There's there's nothing else to do. And this goes the same for most devices. You just punch in the syslog host and uh, it collects data. Make sure you have the port ready and set up. I put it on port 1517. That was predefined and predetermined by me. Um, so, yes. Synology, yes. I see people answering. I'm get Shinobi was the other one. Shinobi is a uh I know I'll just see it, give a shout out because it looked cool. I don't remember it working very well, but it's been a while since I tested it. We'll just drop a link in here for that for those looking. But Shinobi was one of them. They had a cool website. So I don't know how good it works. So that's what it really comes down to, right? How does it actually work? <laughs> Are there any benefits using two and a half gig at home? Usually not. People get excited about it, but unless you actually have the need for that extra speed, then no. <laughs> I love to see info on WireGuard uh, and TrueNAS scale custom Docker images. I can get it to function on scale, but itself, but it's a Docker. Um, I don't really know because. I never run a fire a, a VPN on my uh, storage server. I mean, it doesn't make the most sense to me is the best way I can describe it. I run it on my firewall, not my storage server. So I haven't spent a lot of time on it because it's just not something I use. And uh, maybe I don't understand the use case for it as well. Do you have a plan for the next home lab show? Yes. <laughs> I have a good plan too. I, I'm waiting to confirm. I don't want to say it in case I curse it, but I'm waiting to confirm um, two guests at the same time uh, on one topic. So yes. Uh, best service to backup Office 365. I don't know what the best one is, but uh, you can do it with Synology and it works pretty well. So Synology is definitely an option for it, but there's also off, uh, MSP 360 is another popular one. I don't want some layer three switches so I can offset traffic and offload heavy load to file server. doesn't have to go back to core. Uh, you don't want Unify then. To Unify in layer three routing is terrible. I say that repeatedly. It, buy a different switch. Um, also, don't route your... And let, I mean, maybe you have a, a scenario where you just have to do it, but don't route your file system traffic. I never run net data on PFSense. I don't really see the reason to do that, so... My storage is an array of multiple servers. Uh, create subnets and each thing talks directly is usually the better way to do that. So ZoneMinder does its job on a Raspberry Pi 4 SSD plus Ubuntu. Interesting. If you need 2G at home, you probably could benefit from 10G. Yeah, I mean, it really comes down to your connectivity. The 2.5G people always seem more excited about than I do. It's because 2.5G comes kind of after 10G. The real need for 2.5G comes from, hey, guess what? You can reuse this existing wire, such as Cat5, and get 2.5 gigs out of it. Um, it's, it's kind of a a stopgap because not everyone's willing at the scale enterprise works at to rewire the building, but they'd like a little more speed. So it's a fit uh, for home use. 10 gig is not that pricey. So if you need something fast, connect at 10 gig. So uh, could you run PF sense on the UFI dream machine on the same network? Yes. I have a video on how put in UniFi PF sense uh, or UDM and PF sense. I have a video. It's a, Dumb idea, but I did the video because a lot of people ask. Like, I get it. You bought one. You don't want to get rid of it. That makes sense. So there is a, you, you don't want to just throw it up on eBay and sell it. So, uh, I, but what I recommend buying both of them, not particularly, not, not for the, there's not like a solid use case, but it's usually the use case of, I already have one, but now I want a PF sense. I started running WireGuard on a firewall 
two tunnels and subnets. So I figured it, it would be more granular if I put each on a Docker image to minimize privileges. It can. I don't know how well that performs. Um, it's a different approach to doing it, but I'm generally doing it through the firewall because, well, it has to go through the firewall anyways. Can you do a video comparing issues with Layer 3 from Unify versus a better Layer 3 search? I don't know that that's really much of a video. Like, Unify just does it stupid, and other companies do it normal. Um, that would be the best way I can describe it. Like, it's just Unify has a weird way of doing it and not a common sense way of doing it. They create, like, if I'm not, it's been a while since I looked at it, um, but they they basically create some intermediary networks um, to route through versus the other ones, like other people said, hey, am I a risk to switch? I can just add IP addresses and routes. That's correct. You can just add IP addresses and set up static routes on your switches. But then Unify decided to do something completely different. Like they didn't follow what any other switch company does. So I don't know if it's really a video I'll do or not. Thoughts on vulnerability manager tools uh, that don't cost an arm and a leg. That's tough. Nessus is really popular. A few of my friends use it. Um, I don't know. They're they're all expensive. You know, all the companies doing it are all expensive. And uh, I don't really have an easy answer. So I, I have not sat down and tried to compare all of them. It's a pain. I have a VPN running on TrueNAS core install at my mom's house. I use it for offsite backups. I'm not saying it can't be done. It's just not a common use case for me. I have all my rules. So my PF sense uh, handles all the VPN. And then my TrueNAS, based on those rules within there, are allowed to talk to each other based on granular permissions I've granted them. So that's just where I like all my rules, all of my rules in one place, which is my PF sense handles everything one place. That's just mentally easier for me. Um, but yes, you could get granular um, and set all the rules inside of Docker images on your NAS scale. Uh, as a new home networking hobbyist, what network knowledge would you, uh, would be good to first learn? That's a hard one. Um, but yeah, there's, start with a goal and that usually leads you to what you need to learn to get that goal achieved. So figure out a project that you want to do start with the, well, the goal is the project being completed and working and then start working backwards going, what do I need to know how to get that project going? That's usually my, my way of learning. In the case, I recommend a dedicated uh, Nix even more one for storage sync net one Nick for client facing storage. Yeah, that's how we do it. We have separate NICs for the different storage connectivities. Um, that way, we, the, the NICs for storage are also separate from the NICs on our VMs, uh, where the VMs provide data. So we have a storage network on some, and we have a data network on the other. That way, we're uh, not trying to route traffic because that's... As a matter of fact, even 10 gig layer 3 routing is going to require a switch fast enough to do 10 gig layer three routing. Mikrotik is an example of this. I talked about this when I reviewed it. Can it do layer three? How slow is it at layer three? And I referenced the serve the home who actually answered that question that showed how slow the layer three is on it. A switch that can mount, that can route at layer three and a switch that can do it fast, there's a price difference. Um, that's something to consider. That's why generally you don't route storage. Sericata block tail scale. Yeah, Sericata um, and tail scale, they're not friends. Uh, it, it does things. And tail scale goes, look, look at what I'm going to uh, look around and make this work. And Sericata goes, that's a suspicious behavior. So, yes, you're right. If you have tails, if you have Sericata turned up, it'll detect tail scale. It's weird that it doesn't detect it as tail scale. Tail scale's been around a while. I figured it'd be a rule that goes, I know what this is. It's tail scale and it should have that in there. I didn't see it flag that rule. Just follows your UDM, UDM PF sense video. Great. Awesome. Glad that helped. Uh, layer switch configuration with PF sense is a bit confusing. Um, maybe. I don't know. I don't see. I, I Maybe I'll do a video on it. It's uh, setting one up. Grab a switch. It's just a lot to set up for a demo. And for something that's not used that often, really. The goal worked. It also drained my bank account. Yes. Uh, what surveillance cameras do you favor? Um, we've been really happy with the um, 
Which ones am I using? I always, why the name is on the tip of my tongue. I'm going to pull it up. When in doubt, pull it up. I did a video on these. You can find it on here. They're the uh, Amcrest. So the Amcrest cameras work rather well. This is my Synology surveillance station. Actually, while I'm here, in case anyone's wondering, we're counting cars. That's still a thing we're doing. That's been kind of fun. Uh, detection results, report, car counting. We've been doing uh, almost a month. Yeah, here's a month of counting cars in front of that drive by Tom's house every day. So it's they don't just work. They got some cool features in these synologies. Because my friend didn't understand it. I have a non-tech friend. We were talking about it. He's like, you counted the cars on your camera? Like, did you have nothing better to do? <laughs> is how he replied. And I'm like, no, not really. And I said, oh, you think I actually counted them like on the camera? He's like, yeah. I said, the machine does it. He goes, oh, okay. <laughs> uh, fun stuff. Yep, Amcrest. That's the ones. And uh, I have my video on some of the advanced surveillance features that come with Synology. I'm doing another video on the deep video analytics that's come with Synology, including this feature here. Um, but yeah, yeah, the, the Synology works great. I'm really happy with it. Works great with the cameras. Um, it occasionally gets things wrong, uh, but all of them do. And it's actually the cameras getting this particular thing wrong. Synology is a little better than the cameras, but if I go through my recordings and I filter them for... We're going to go driveway event type is uh, what would it be? I think it's just advanced event. Nope. I got the wrong filters. Just advanced event. There we go. Like last night, something set it off. Whatever this video is. Let me look at it. I bet it's a spider. Yeah. Now, it thought the spider was a person. So please note, this. It, it flagged this as a person when that spider came in. I don't know why it shouldn't have. So it decided to, and I don't know. But it does that once in a while. It did that last night and then this morning. My guess is, is it detected my wife driving off. Yeah. So this time it flagged it properly because it's seen the car leaving the driveway. So once in a while it gets things wrong, but the overall I'm really happy with it. There's very there's very few detections where it gets false positives. What do you recommend for threat management for home security alongside PF Sense? Uh, they're all in one solutions like Untangle Sophos. They seem to be simplified things. Are they worth the dollars? I mean, for home, I don't use anything. Uh, I the problem is, and people realize, if you're running something like Sarah Cotter Snort, you now have a job of managing all of that yourself and dealing with all the false positives and investigating all the false positives. Honestly, the Microsoft Defender software works really well for an endpoint security if you're running Windows. Um, but the threat management stuff on your home is probably pretty minimal. And uh, separate your network, you know, separate the ability for lateral movement for devices if you have someone on your network like a kid upstairs playing games. He should do that on a separate network. That's separate from things that I, I find important that have logins. Uh, and then I don't worry about it too much. It's just generally not the way the attacks happen. Most of the time you're, you're most likely to be attacked via a phishing email, you clicking on a site, a flaw in a tool you're using. Those are the most likely scenarios, not your firewall. The firewall is blind to most of the things that are happening because there so many of them are encrypted. Somebody even said it the other day of, oh, you got to block all the outgoing ports. I'm like, you realize modern malware, not the amateur stuff, but the modern real malware out there generally beacons out to uh, a Let's Encrypt certificate, all encrypted over 443. They wrap all their Cobalt Strike being a popular beacon system. That's all wrapped in security and looks like any other transaction. So, yeah. Do you recommend Synology or TrueNAS? I'm a computer engineer. I do like the challenge of building a TrueNAS, but worried about the power consumption versus Synology. You can build a TrueNAS that doesn't consume a lot of power. It's just not going to be cheap. 
Bugs love the IR light. Yes. And therefore spiders like the IR light because it attracts the bugs and the cycle of life continues. The, the web of life there. The NVR and surveillance pro software leaves a lot to be desired. Well, I mean, have I seen more advanced ones? Yes. Have I seen the fees that come with some of the more advanced ones? Yes. I think Synology meets a good middle of good features and uh, not being crazy expensive. Unified cameras like to flag spiders as people too. Also birds if they sit in front of the camera. Yes. Spider QC tester. We'll go with that. It's weird that it does not detect it. Uh, thank you, Tom, for doing that very smart. Awesome. <laughs> um, what would you say to someone calling Unify apps uh, pro servers instead of actually something business ready? Would they rather use Cisco, Aruba, WatchGuard, or something enterprise? I don't. I just don't split those hairs. I generally, I mean, people call it what they want. There's, I actually had a conversation not that long ago where someone was a pretty much a smart ass to me. Um, I was at a school board meeting that I was a paid advisor for, by the way, not like a board meeting, like open forum, but I had suggested a, a PF sense of the solution. And they had made the comment, we don't have time for your open source toys, Tom, because the guy was pushing Cisco. By the way, they're still my client and they're now using more of our stuff. Um, but you just kind of, it, it, some people have it in their head. That's fine. We've had people that get it in their head. They want a certain thing and we'll quote it out for them with the thing they want. And sometimes they go, I can't believe it's that much more expensive. I said, then buy it. Which one do you want? Uh, I can do it with the Unify for X. You can do it with the Cisco for Y. You decide. He wanted to go Meraki because you think Meraki's got better support. Meraki does have better support. Here's the license. Here's your commitment for it. You know, that's what you want to go with. Awesome. This is what it costs. <laughs> <laughs> one simple way to help protect uh, your PC is to give your general user account admin access, set up a separate account and account. Yeah, practicing principles of leave privilege on your computer, good idea as well. Uh, what is the Synology app to you look at? They have their own app for, um, they have their own phone app. So there's nothing really you have to do. Does Synology have some way to custom order and ask? They make boxes designed how you want them designed so you uh you, you know you get the ones you want they have a whole list of them you buy them you're not really customizing them you'd pick the thing that fits your use case or the workload and they have like a surveillance station finder they have a what apps are you going to use to narrow it down they have a nas finder on their website to help narrow that uh, choice down you can put well and deep ssl but it's going to be seen and might get blocked uh you know, I that's what everyone thinks. The, the salespeople will tell you that deep SSL will discover it. If you want to watch all the proof you need, look what happened with Solar Winds and their Orion product. All those companies that got hit, including Mandiant, Mandiant especially had some of the most advanced deep SSL inspection ever. They didn't know until someone told them what it was until they found it on their network. This has been my argument about these things. You only can know absolute knowns. If they're not known, it passes through these firewalls and does nothing. It goes through and owns 400 uh, Fortune 500 companies that all have SOC teams, every one of them, and every one of them missed it because they didn't know what to look for. So the deep SSL works as long as they're using a known IP address of a known threat actor of a known system, and we absolutely know the pattern. That's it. If they don't know all those things, it's just something that passes through the firewall like every other website that uses a Let's Encrypt cert, which is a pretty substantial number of them. So, yeah. So the salespeople uh, don't win over very well on me on that. Correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't Synology Savannah Station free after the price of the hardware cameras and the per camera license? Yes, they do not have recurring licenses on their surveillance system or the device itself. Ah, yes, yeah, Cisco and their deprecated cryptography. Yep. Your gifts are awesome. Helping novice set up a bear system. Awesome. Good to hear. Have any good resources for running a layer two tunnel over existing layer three VPNs? Can't find a good resource. I don't have a resource for that. Sorry. Um, I haven't looked at Blue Iris in a long time. I just don't have an interest in it. It's to me a very consumer product that doesn't excite me. 
Um, it, it's novel. It runs on Windows is pretty much why I don't even have an interest in it. If it ran on Linux, I might consider it. But the fact that it, last I checked, it only supports Windows. And uh, it it's, wasn't that interesting to me. Some people seem to like it. It's kind of neat because there's so many things you can configure with it. I've seen people integrate it into home automation. It's got a lot of expandability. It takes a lot to get that work. It's not like out of the box it has that. It takes some time and effort to put into it. It's not a horrible product to my understanding, but I don't I don't feel as though as it's professional or good as uh, Synology. I wouldn't do it commercially. As a home user, yeah, maybe play with it. Maybe it fits your need really well. Um, but Synology happens to just be very turnkey, and we've sold these a lot to businesses. And even a lot of some of the home users uh, go, wow, this is easy. Matter of fact, my wife likes the Synology. It's simple to her. It just works. My wife is not a technical person, and that kind of my joke. It passed the wife test, or just generally anyone who is not technical using it. So my wife, not being a technical person, she has no problem understanding how this analogy works and looking at the cameras. It works when she's here. It works when she's not here, when she's external. Uh, so yeah, just simplicity. Do you have any videos on device pass through? Nope. And I don't really, it's not really high on my to-do list to do any pass through videos for XCPNG. Tom, I've used several of your videos to set up my PSS very well. Thanks for putting those out. Awesome. Can you integrate PFSense into Home Assistant? Actually, yes, um, probably. It's not native integration, but you can do things like that. There's probably a way to do it. So I, yeah, maybe, um, I don't know. I am going to wind this down in another 10 minutes because I have that event to go to. So 10 more minutes of questions. <laughs> yeah, the um, I think Jay has an integration in there. There's some trickery he did by creating a user and an SSH key, I think, and then having the Home Assistant SSH into PFSense to trigger an event. Jay was playing with it. I was kind of, I don't really have a use case for that, but I think Jay was using it to trip firewall rules um, at certain, at, based on something that happens in Home Assistant. Like it was a proof of concept. Uh, Jay from Learn Linux TV talked about, we have no documentation on this. We're just saying there's probably a way to make that work. So, yeah, I it can, might be kind of fun to play with. Is it nice outside? I'm going to look now. My wife's not home still. The car is still gone. Empty garage. What do you think of my garage is the motorcycles? So, hey, why not? You know, for the last few minutes, I'll jump off topic because I do that occasionally. So the, uh, I did manage to hammer out with a friend of mine. I did some mileage. So I, uh, commented on this before though. The, we just, I hammered out another 700 miles with one of my friends on, uh, motorcycles and off-roading. So that's what I do on the weekend sometimes. And that's actually 700 miles. And that's with the trip getting cut short. So, <laughs> We had to reboot my friend's motorcycle, you know, uh, so there was still some tech things to do on, on the road. The uh, the computer got the computer had an error and we had to restart the computer to get the, you know, the motorcycle computer to get the bike started again. So it would go down the road. <laughs> uh, do you think you're big? Uh, yes, it will be back in stock. I just can't predict stock. Are you and wife in the gardening? Not at all. Not really my thing. Um, I've never been big into that. You know, it's just not, not really me. I actually, I, I brought, brought before I grew up doing a lot of that stuff, but um, you know, the closest we do is uh, we, we like our backyard being nice and stuff, but not actually gardening. The only thing I've done with layer two uh, over layer three was able to use DCP for D sure instead of uh, its own block for the open VPN. There is an integration you created. Okay, that's neat that there's some on there. I created uh, buttons to activate VPN rules for the TV so that I can change VPN country on Netflix. That's a very clever use case. I'm not going to lie. Um, I like that. That's that's neat. 
I don't really have anything internationally that I watch. That's why I probably it's not a use case for me, but it's pretty cool. I finally have a start date, seven, eight weeks. Uh, awesome. Thanks for answering all the questions. Uh, and thanks for all the videos and sponsor your channel. I purchased my first Unify equipment out PF Sense. Great. Glad you got started on there. That is awesome. Are, oh, there are some OpenVPN clients. Yeah, I think that's probably true. Probably true. Well, I'm going to get going to the event. Uh, we have, what, just a couple more minutes, five more minutes of questions and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. Motorcycle road trips to the back roads. Absolutely. That is, um, that's a lot of what I end up doing is, uh, just doing these out a lot of off-roading, you know, hammering out a lot of miles of my, uh, in my adventure bike. That's, that's my disconnect from all this tech that I do all the time. So, uh, there are limits to how much time they take off. It's not unlimited, but it's, it's generous. Um, above average i don't know uh it's they they usually don't want to use it all the uh, so far i don't think anyone is even halfway through all of their uh paid time off so i try to keep it rational with them you got to try to keep the workplace nice and a happy place to work thanks for all the pf sense fits yeah i got more coming more coming on this you know more I don't know that I'll do an tail scale video because I think I covered it. It works great. Um, but the, the definitely the, um, the head scale video is coming where I will be covering that. Hardly ever take time off spoken like a true American. We're Americans. We never take times off, but every time I have a friend in Europe, they're like, I'm on holiday this month. <laughs> it's so much different over there. It's just this weird. I'm trying to, cause I never take time off myself. And, um, I'm trying to schedule time because I do intense vacations like I did, you know, three day weekend or two day. Matter of fact, that was 24 hours, 700 miles and lots of off roading. Um, I did. So I usually do a more intense vacation. I, I need to do like a real I, and it's not to relax because I don't really relax a vacation. I need something that I'm doing intensely. Um, that's still a vacation to me. It's just a a vacation. I guess I would define myself as some time away from tech, but I love my job so much. It's really hard to take a vacation. I think my time off right now is working at this engineer uh, two decades as a assistant. Yeah. How can you ever time off? You don't take the time. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's, it's a, it's a tricky balance. Um, I don't like, even when I go to events, like my travel events are business related and it's just, I don't know. I, I don't, I like the schedule I keep and the rituals I do thereof. You know what I mean? It's always, I, it, I'm in a process. I do this, I do this, I do this. And when they get disrupted, I don't get aggravated, but I feel lost a little bit. So always trust that process you've created for yourself has been in my head. I'm European, barely do any vacations these days. Uh, I have due to laws. I get bored not working. I like, yeah. Yeah. I have you been to Spice Works? No. So nonetheless, all right. Now we've reached the end because I know Brett's going to be here soon because we're riding together to go to the event. So thanks everyone for joining. See you next time. Head over to my forums for a more in-depth discussion. I think I mentioned before, I'm like it, amazing how many people on the forums. It's become a very active group. That's where I spend a lot more of my time interacting with people because the YouTube comment system is hot garbage. As everyone knows, I do enjoy these live streams a little better, but yeah. Um, Definitely the forums are where I will give you in, we can have an interactive discussion with screenshots and where uh, we can discuss a product and actually you know, post all the links and everything else, all the things you can't easily do with YouTube. So that's definitely fun. Not to mention there's a good audience there. Right? There's, I believe right now there's over 7,000 people on my forums. So yes, plenty of people to interact with. Many of them taking the, some take the time to do some nice write-ups as well, which is awesome. I love when people, uh, you know, to put together some of the answers to questions with an in-depth. Awesome. Thank you. Please never go and say, I uh, don't be that person who says I solved it. 
but don't say how we, we need to know how this is you bumped it like two years later problem solved but wait how did you solve it because we all keep landing on the same question so that's why i always encourage forums i try to even answer the questions you know if someone didn't of how to solve some of the problems but thanks again everyone and take care